This video is brought to you by Miniature Market. Thousands of board games, discounted prices, miniaturemarket.com. Hello my friends, the Game Boy Geek here. Today, we're in the jungle. We're trying to get from the waters through the paths in the jungle to try to get to the temples. Today we're talking about Karuba. This is from Haba. This is two to four players. Plays in about, well the box is I think 30 minutes. That's a lot quicker than that actually. But let me show you how it's played. This is a puzzle game where everybody's working at the same time simultaneously against each other. Let me show you. In Karuba, you're going to be trying to get your adventurers of a certain color through the jungle into a temple of the same color. You're trying to get this done through all four people. Now the setup is interesting. It's the same for every player. Every player gets his own board. Most of the players will all set up their tiles around their board in sequential order from 1 to 36 here. And how these get set up is pretty much everybody gets to decide where to put one color of a guy and one color of a temple with the guys being on the side of the beach and the temples being on the side of here. There's a couple of little other rules, but essentially everyone's board will start exactly the same. Now, there will be one player who's playing, instead of having these things around like this, they'll be shuffled face down in one big tall stack. That player will be the caller for the game, uh, and they will be taking a tile off the top of their stack and yelling what number it is. And so and once that happens, people just start to go. So for example, the tile caller might yell number 24, because that's what he pulled up. Everybody pulls up number 24. Now these tiles are the same for every player. The board is set up the same for every player. So everyone's literally playing their own mini solitaire game, but you're watching other people. So I have number 24. Now when you play some tiles, let's get a closer look. You can, there's a, you can put them pretty much anywhere, but one thing is you cannot spin them. They have the, the numbers have to be in the top left. You can't put them half seas like that. They have to go in an actual square, but you can really put them anywhere. You can't put them on top of another tile, uh, but any open spot you can basically put them in. So for example, I might want to put this guy, I don't know, maybe I want to put this thing, you know, right here. And then, then the player calls out number four. All right, so everybody takes their number four tile, and maybe I take this guy, you know, the, the blue guy's gonna have to go up here, and maybe I take this here. If there's a gem on there, I now place it. And maybe they say, number two. Well, I grab number two, and I put it here. Maybe they say, number nine. Now, when they say these numbers, you actually don't have to have a path all the way. You can cause dead ends if you want, if it makes more sense to do so. So when you're doing this, you're, you know, you're placing tiles. It could be out here in the middle of nowhere. You can go pretty much anywhere. You have a lot of freedom here. You're trying to figure out, you know, where things uh, might, might lead to. Now, if I don't want to place this tile, instead of placing it, I can discard it and I can start to move one person. Now, there are between two and four pathways going off of a card. This says two, one and two. I can decide to discard this card out of the game and move any one of my people two spots. Now, they can't go in the jungle. They actually have to go, he can't go in the jungle, but this guy has a path. He can go one, two. Now, you can't split the movements up. I can't go one and then move another guy one. I have got to go all the way with him, move it, and I can move him there and he could stop. Or I can move him one, and because there's a diamond here or a gem, I could pick this up, but I must uh, end my movement here. I have, an, I have two movements, but I used just one because I landed there, I stopped, and I took the gem. You could pass it if you want, but if you stop to take the gem, he's done moving. You're essentially using up all your movements. These gems are worth two, uh, one point at the end of the game. Now, there's some tiles, like number 14, for example, that comes out, uh, and when you place this, this one is going to be, uh, let's say... This guy, let's move this guy right here. Let's just say. Let's just say it goes here. Okay, this one gets a big gem. Those ones are worth two points. So what you're trying to do is get your guy all the way to this, this uh, temple. So we fast forward a little bit. Let's say tile seven's called. This one has four spots uh, coming off the tile. One, two, three, and four. I don't want to use it, I discard it. I can go one, two, three, four, and move them up here. Now let's say some of the, he comes up here, he says 36. That's, I have two pathways. I want to discard this to move a guy. One, two. Now because I'm here, the yellow person can never, you can never block uh, or go through somebody. So because he's on this tile, this yellow person cannot come out. But let's say someone calls a tile, he says 33. I want to throw this away for two movements. 
and I put them here. Once somebody's off and on the temple, they can no longer be moved. Now there's some tiles here for each of the temples and the amount of tiles and the points and the way they're, they're set up depending on the amount of players. So in this case with a three player game, uh, it goes five. So the first person here would get five points. Next person would get three and the third person would get two and so on and so forth. So the faster you get to some of these, the more points you get. Now this will continue until either uh, one person has gotten all four of their people to a temple. Of course, this wouldn't have happened. We would have needed places to go there. But if that happens, the game ends or until all the tiles have been called and the game ends and then you count up your points. So here I have five and five, which is 10, 12. The big ones are worth two, so that's 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. I'd have 18 points. You count up, whoever has the most points is the winner. And if there's a tie, whoever has the most island tiles on here is also the winner. Look, Haba's got a great, uh, you know, history of doing great kid games. And recently they've been doing these family style games, which are a little bit heavier. And wow, I've heard a lot of great things about this game. I think it was on Z Garcia's top 10 list for the year, I think. Uh, him and I have gone back and forth talking about how puzzle games are sort of our favorite games. And I, puzzly games, I absolutely love. And I looked at this and I'm like, oh, this looks really cool. I've got to mention, even with high expectations, high people claiming praise to this game, a lot of times games don't live up to that. This game did. This is an amazing game. Uh, I would be very surprised if this game does not get at least nominated for the Spiel des Jahres this year. It's that good. Uh, it's designed by the same person that did uh, Las Vegas, uh, that game. And there's just, it's simple. It, it really hits all, all cylinders in that depth to complexity ratio I like to talk about. There's two rules. You're listening to a tile, you're either placing it or you're discarding it and moving a guy. That's it. I mean, it's so simple. You think it's just it, it, like, oh, this isn't going to be any thoughtfulness. Man, this game has you thinking a lot more deeply than you think it will off the cuff. Now, I love how this whole thing of you, the, the, the setup's different every game, right? You, everyone has the same board. Everyone has the same tiles. Everyone starts in the same spot and you all end up in different places. I love that. I like puzzle games in general and this was really cool like that. Uh, I really like the aspect of... of you know, you're starting to lay the track for a guy, the path, and at some point you got to decide, am I going to make the run to try to get that big points? You know, be the first person to get there? Or am I going to stop and get the gems and collect them? And, and you're watching what people are doing, and as soon as someone makes a move, okay, well, he's starting to move on blue. Uh, maybe I'll just let him go there. I'll go with somebody else. Or, you know what, my blue guy's going to gonna be second. Uh, he's going to be second anyways. Let's stop and take a gem. And it's like these, these time. it's all about the timing laying out a beautiful layout, trying to get the right tiles at the right time, forward planning, trying to figure out, okay, with well, this tile, I don't need it right now, but this is probably gonna need to go here. Uh, and just the whole timing of it, watching what other people are doing, because it really is solitaire, but at the same time, it's not, because you really have to play off what other people are doing. Man, I really love this game. Awesome, awesome, it knocked it out of the park. I mean, I can't speak highly enough. This is one of my favorite family games. In fact, if I had played this before the end of last year, this might have made my family game of the year versus Looney Quest, which was my pick. Excellent, excellent game. Uh, if you're looking for a family level light gateway game, it's very fast too. With two, the game's over in about 12 minutes. Um, the only thing I could suggest something uh, is it's a little bit of a disadvantage to be the player making the calls because you can't see the tiles. You have to kind of look at somebody else's board to see what tiles are left. This game screaming for an app where everyone can put the tiles around their board and the app you push the button it just calls the next tile maybe shows a picture of it and that would fix that i wish they would do that but other than that, i'm nitpicking here because this game is amazing if you like light uh gateway style games that the whole family can enjoy check out karuba i actually have a friend coming over tomorrow we're having a big game party he's bringing his copy i'm going to do my copy we're going to break it out and just try to play eight players at once and figure out the scoring and how to figure it all out so i don't see why a reason why you could do it anyways that's karuba now, obviously, I've gushed about this game enough, and I love it so much, I'm going to keep it in my gaming library. So let's induct it into my gaming library with a saxophone serenade. <laughs> This video was sponsored by Miniature Market's Review Corner. The Review Corner features podcasts, video, and written game reviews by gamers for gamers. Miniature Market, the online gaming superstore. Thousands of board games, discounted prices. Check them out at miniaturemarket.com.